which is a repository for all the latest OpenStax over the next three releases that will backport to the LTS. So one of the problems um, a bunch of server people had is, I want the OpenStack goodness, but I want an LTS, and I'm not going to upgrade my servers every six months. You guys are crazy. Mm -hmm. So we're backporting all of OpenStack to the LTS releases. Mm -hmm. um, so that's called the Cloud Archive. That is probably the one of my favorite things that we're doing. Um, another thing we have is Metal as a Service. How many of you guys have heard of this? This is called MAS. So when I work at Oakland, one of the first things I set up was like a server that was a Pixie server that would install other machines and things like this. What MAS is, is it's like a server that will manage installing uh, other servers for you. Or so, desktops. Um, I think it could do desktops, but generally the use case for this is you want um, to run a bunch of servers, but you don't want the VM overhead of OpenStack. So what happens here is with MAS, instead of VMs firing up on OpenStack, MAS turns on machines for you and provisions them, and then when you're done using them, it will unprovision them and shut them off and things like that. What's it, so it, the, is it IPMI, or how is it turning yeah, machines Yeah, actually on? it does have IPMI support. Wow. Oh, it doesn't work very well, it though. It says it, it right stop. there. <laughs> it works reasonably. It's not well, yeah. well tested. But in, in like once something is functional, it's generally functional. Yeah. Yeah. It basically allows you to treat a group of hardware systems as a as a cloud and say, you know, give me a hardware, give me a system, and then and it, it, it installs it fresh for you, and then put your SSH keys on it, and you SSH into it, and use it, and then you say, okay, I'm done with it. And then it turns into the pool. Yeah, then it shoves it back in the pool. Okay. So um, there's cool videos on that. It has like this cool circle, and it shows you what's being deployed, what isn't being deployed. Um, so how you control MAS and OpenStack is via this tool called Juju. I heard Ryan gave you guys a decent talk about Juju mm -hmm. a few months ago. Mm -hmm. yep. So uh, one of the new things we have is Juju is awesome. Is we have <laughs> is we have the Juju GUI. Please work. <laughs> Please work. This doesn't work. It's Mark Graham's fault. No. There we go. Yeah. Right. So what you do here? All that's did, did Ryan show you this last time? No, I don't think so. Uh, you'll have. So you have Juju and you'll have your mass server sitting in your in your data center or your open stack. Uh, Juju actually doesn't care and you'll say, I want to deploy uh, PostgreSQL. And then depending on the connection here. This is normally fast. Yes, this is normally very fast. Right? All right, so what will happen here, and then you'll get a little box. And here you'll be able to click and deploy servers. And then when you say, I want WordPress, and you drag it onto that thing, Maz will go turn on one of your servers in, in your mm. server farm, install Postgres on it, and then you'll come back here, and you'll draw a line. This is actually really cool. You'll draw a line between WordPress and whatever this is and then it'll connect those two together and make a relation and then you'll right click and expose this or or you can just drag them around um, <laughs> so what's cool here uh, this mouse I sort of got uh, so this this part actually does work really well so what will happen in here is um, you'll have your WordPress your Mac you'll you'll model your thing however you want and then when you want to scale more you just click on this and is it control click? There it is. Um, and you'll just add unit, and then it'll s keep turning on more servers, and you'll scale in like five minutes. So um, this is pretty cool. This is something that Mark Ram's team is leading at Chronicle, and it's really awesome. What's great about this is uh, the way you model and do this, you can either do it on Amazon, HP Cloud, or on your own hardware, uh, which is really handy. Um, and then you can move stuff around. Um, I guess we have updated Java, but who cares? Any Java folks in the crowd? Okay. <laughs> um, typical storage. Oh, another one. Um, if you can find someone who could do a talk on Ceph, that would be really great. Ceph is a clustered file system um, by the guys at Ink Tank. And I haven't had a chance to play with it, but it's pretty awesome. What are uh, the Ink Tank evangelist guys? That, okay. Okay. Get that. That, that guy will be awesome. <laughs> um, Write that down. I will. <laughs> ARM support, I don't know how many guys have ever seen ARM servers. They're really awesome because you can pick like 
200 cores in like a 2U chassis or whatever. I've actually seen one with Calzada actually deploying all this stuff. Um, so that's an area that's going to be pretty awesome. Um, and then all of the cloud images on Amazon and all those public clouds are all up to date now, thanks to Scott Moser. Um, that's what he does every day. I, I don't know what takes him so long. Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of secure boot stuff that we had to do. I don't know enough about secure boot to comment, just that it's really complicated. Um, and typical tool chain stuff. So that's servers, server stuff. But the big ones are OpenStack, Maz, and Juju. This is kind of like our a little platform of the de deploying stuff. So. All right, I'm really done talking. Okay. <laughs> so, are you sure? Any any other questions? Any other? Anyone else want to talk about something? I think new I think I can. Time? I think I might be able to. Let's see how fast this is. Okay, next time when I'm ready, I'm going to deploy an entire WordPress in like two minutes. Okay. You want to go back here, guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah look at that. Fast user switching works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be nice. All right. Is there Anything else you wanted to add to the uh, server stuff, Scott? Or? Well, I say uh, OpenStack and, and Yaws are neat. If you're interested in, you, you have, you are deploying lots of servers and primarily lots of Ubuntu servers, then Moz is, oh. is a really good concept. It needs some polish still, but um, it's okay. really, really neat. But if you tried it before, it would be way more. <laughs> it was totally broken last time. <laughs> okay, I'm going with it way more polished now. <laughs> <laughs> but I never got it. So the thing with the things with things like mass is people are like, oh, I need a server like that. Let me go home and mess with it. But you do need to know like how your network is laid out. Like we have some people trying mass, but they don't control like their DHCP server or their DNS server at work, and they set it up and it like conflicts with stuff. And so like it. it you should have like your own little network. You should know like what a VM is. I need. It's kind of sensitive. See. It's kind of sensitive to things like that. Right. If you're at work, this has happened to me before. You start setting up your own DHCP server. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like the yeah. network team doesn't know, and then you're like, in and trouble. There's some injuries. Okay. Well, they won't let you do it because it will break your fingers before you try. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it, it allows you basically to treat your local hardware as if it were mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You can set up kind of like an Amazon on your own hardware. Yeah, on, on, and then if you want, you know, and that's for, for hardware. And you get hardware out and you can say, you know, provision me something and return that and kill it. And, and, uh, um, if you want you know, much more of an, of an Amazon on your own hardware. But we would use, we would have Moz control hardware, and Juju would tell Moz to install OpenStack and all this components. And then Juju can go to OpenStack and install the charms and do things like that. Hmm. So you install, you install OpenStack, Juju lets you operate OpenStack. Yes, Juju mm -hmm. lets you operate a, uh, basically a machine provider. And Moz is one of those, and OpenStack is one of those. Okay. Well, now that I owe George dinner, because um, <laughs> he pretty much did a superset of everything that I was going to talk about. Uh, anyone else have anything? What uh, I'm curious. What 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 do we look forward to for uh, 1304 for the R release? Oh, I'm going to show you guys something. <laughs> <laughs> You're bucking for dessert, so aren't you? No, this is actually, this <laughs> yeah. one's actually really important because I know a lot of users, um, myself included, um, this was like a real issue for them. So in the past, I want to say four years ago, uh, this, Jim, I remember this specifically, this guy <laughs> tried to give a presentation and he couldn't get his protector to work. And he I'm was... <laughs> this, this thing? Mine worked. I, I think... 
There's some pep cap going on there with that one. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are um, you going to be doing the keyword? It's wordless. Uh, and Jim was there, and I remember coming back, and I just started working in Canonical. I was like, Jim McQuillan, the only way he can get his stupid projector to work that day is because he was like helped write X and knows all the X guys. And oh, he's yeah. like one of five people still left in this world that can generate a <laughs> Zorg.com by hand. Like he actually <laughs> just wrote a Zorg.com right there and got it working. And, um, but back then, uh, the project and the company was still small and we couldn't really invest in QA. So for a long, long time in Ubuntu, QA was like, well, follow your bug in Launchpad and then a bunch of volunteers like me will go in there and then we'll triage your bugs. And then we'll give all these bugs to the X developers and then they'll just sit there and handle all this all this garbage. Um, so that's not real QA. That's not, like, if you build cars that way, people would die. Um, <laughs> so what we do now is we actually do real, honest-to-goodness software engineering QA. Um, this started around 11.10. Most of it was in place in 12.04 and we're, we're expanding it all the time. So this right now is one of the biggest uh, priorities for the project. So uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that we have. Is it QA.Jenkins? Scott? Um, Thank you. Next time I'm bringing my own keyboard. So one thing we do now is every single piece of software that we ship um, in main gets shoved into Jenkins. Jenkins is a uh, continuous integration tool. It basically just builds things over and over and over again. And then when something breaks, this thing turns uh, either yellow or red. So right now, uh, this thing is broken and this thing is broken. So what we do in the past in the development version of Ubuntu is you would just run it and one day you would just wake up and do an upgrade and you couldn't log in or something. So now what happens is if um, any of this stuff hits red, it doesn't hit the archive at all automatically. Someone has to go fix it. And on top of that, the developers are now forced to upload to a staging area before it even gets to the development release. Um, so, that, so that's really handy. And then we tie that to this thing called errors.ubuntu.com. How many of you have ever seen anything crash in Ubuntu and it tells you something really bad happened, click this, and you can send a report to developers, and then it keeps asking you over and over and over again, and you're like, dude, I sent this already. Mm -hmm. um, so what we've been doing is collecting a lot of data, and this is like a huge database built on Cassandra. Um, and we're now actually starting to collect stats on, on what things and crashes are happening. So we've collected over 22 million crash reports <laughs> since May. Um, there's actually a talk on this I can send you guys later where the guy who wrote this actually talks about it. Um, what's really great about this is that for 1310, that's what's coming up, 1304. 13 yeah. Sorry, this is very cyclical of me. Mm -hmm. um, so for 1304, what will happen is in the stable release, what will happen is um, uh, let's say a developer does a fix, it'll go out in a phased update. So 1% of Ubuntu users will get that fix. Mm -hmm. And then if no reports come back, then they'll double that. And then they'll keep doubling that like every day. Now, if let's say they get halfway through and there's a huge spike in the amount of errors, the update just stops going out, um, which is awesome. Android's been doing this for a really long time, uh -huh. right? Where it's like, hey guys, a new version of Android is coming and like nobody knows when they're gonna get it because they're doing a phased update, right? And like every upgrade they do, the thing reports back whether it's successful or not. If it's bad, they stop updates for everybody. Right. In the past, it was like, hey, everybody, don't upgrade today. Your computer will break. Yeah. Which is totally you don't have to be on IRC that day. <laughs> yeah, if you weren't on IRC, yeah, if you don't know me. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> so the things we used to do were like reactive QA. It's like, well, we published this fix, and if no one's reporting bugs, it must be working, <laughs> which, is, which is like fine when you're like really small. But when you start to get big and say you're enterprise level, you have to do things like this. So... Um, now we're able to tell. So the next smart thing would be to send it out to the people who are really sh quick at sending errors. Right, messages. so what we're doing for this cycle is we're telling the testers for the alpha to run the proposed version. So even if you're running the alpha releases and stuff, there'll be a group of, of canaries ahead of you to like <laughs> run into that stuff. Which is great because 
we're, we're forced to run the alphas whether we like because we, we're a dog fooding company so I'm really happy about this because you know if someone wants to can you opt into the one percent uh, yes absolutely okay. yeah you just run the proposed directory um, so uh, let me just show you some of the other things is that actually limited or is it no uh, whoever wants you just add it's like enabling a PPA or something okay. um, here there here we are cool. so um, over the past, I think this is the past 30 days, or oh, this is just the past day, these are the packages that have been causing the most amount of problems um, in Ubuntu. So if like five of you run into that problem and hit submit, um, what happens is it, that frequency number goes up by one. And now Ubuntu developers have basically reorganized their workflow to use this data. So that means that um, there's a greater chance that if there's a problem that's affecting more people, it'll get fixed sooner. Um, so that in conjunction with the Jenkins, um, when you tie in with the Jenkins stuff, what will happen is, is when a developer hasn't even made a release, he's committed it to VCS, and if it's failing, it won't allow them to actually like commit it anywhere. Uh, so we think that's, that's really cool. Um, what else? Hold on. That's very neat. So the ones yeah. that are crossed off there, the ones that were fixed? Uh, yeah, I think so. L let, me, uh, let me make this to... Uh, <coughs> So do they still accept volunteers for helping with that type of stuff, or is that? Oh yeah, absolutely, just, just absolutely. The nice thing is, before you had to be like, "Hey, you want to help Ubuntu do this?" And then we had to we had to give classes here on how to triage bug reports and do all that kind of stuff. Now you don't even have to do that. Even if you have no idea what you're doing, if something's crashing and you hit send, that like helps because it, it attaches all the right logs. It does. It does. But if you want to help fix that stuff, stuff, is that where? Oh uh, yeah, there's a whole group. I can I can tell you how to get involved. Just a little feedback on that. You have to remember what your user ID and password is to log in to do that. You might want to uh, mm -hmm. like recommend an, an anonymous button. You shouldn't have to log in. No? Okay. Just to send bug reports? Yeah, you just submit it. Oh. Yeah, before you used to have to be like, here's how you use Launchpad, and then the guy would be like, I quit. Yeah. Um, where did I put? Oh, sorry. Let me go back here. So on top of that, let me do, let's do the past year. So um, when Evan, the guy who wrote this, um, when he was doing this demo, he also did the opposite, where he showed a graph of um, the amount of error ports coming in, and it was nice and low. And then the developer did a fix, and the error rate actually went up, because the guy made a mistake and like accidentally broke something. Um, so when you have data like this that you can update on the hour, it kind of makes it easier for us to catch something before it hits mm -hmm. you. Um, did I switch this to any past year? Past year, but it didn't. Is there a? Do you have to submit it or anything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's got July through. Uh, I think that may, might be too much. I think it crashed the deal. It's a this is a ton of data, believe it or not. Can you give an <laughs> error report on the error page? Yeah. 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 Will it generate it? Hey man, patch is accepted. Yeah. So okay, so yeah, this this is the past month. I think the other one like overloaded the view. Even the past month is the jockey. Is yeah, the exactly. Problem. Right. So this is kinda neat. Before we used to be like, yeah, this tool was kinda garbage. So yeah, the things with lines through them, those have been those have been fixed. fixed. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? What's that long-term version of Ubuntu? Can you limit it to just that one? Uh, the one that's supposedly stable version. Yeah. Yeah, well, the long-term just means long-term support. Then they're all stable when they're released. Yeah, but there's this thought that. <laughs> They didn't do anything drastic in the long-term support release. It was really more polished. No, I'm just wondering how, many, how much it picked up in uh, Still Jockey. Nice. Well done, Jockey. If you don't know what Jockey <laughs> is, the thing that installed the binary module for yeah. proprietary binary code. Yeah. Ah. So, so this one's interesting because the Ubuntu tweak isn't support. even in the archive. That's just people adding that one, yeah. which is interesting. Um, Software Center, the installer. Would that be like if the GStreamer modules and stuff? Yeah. Jockey doesn't do that, I don't think. Jockey, like, if you need the API binary driver, or, you know, if you recognize your hardware, then it'll pull that and install uh, it. 
it's really like it's the thing that is most difficult to service. We don't it's just a blob. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the things too is this just deals with crashes. So what Evan's going to do is this cycle for 1310 is going to include GPU hangs. It's going to include kernel oopses. He has like a criteria of like 10 things. So this is like a huge priority for us right now. The idea being is uh, being more data driven, I guess. And there is a talk. How do you know what's resolved? Then? They've had lines for it. Yeah, well, where did those go? They're gone now. Yes. They seem to come and go. Let's look at the bug report. Is there anything that does this type of thing for like across distributions? Like the bug reporting? Uh, like bug collection or anything like that? I don't know. As far as I can tell. No. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how RHEL does things. But as far as I can tell, I think just we're doing this, at least publicly. There you go. The well, how did you make that happen? The line? I don't know. I just went back. It could be broken. That's only for one day. Oh, yeah, this is the default one. So uh, let me just give you one, one quick link. Um, yeah. Is I will send you guys this link, but Evan, the guy who wrote that, basically, uh, he did a lightning talk with all the data um, where he did an example where that bug was you know, happened to people like 59,000 times, and then the amount of days. Um, and he actually has, we're actually measuring metrics on how long it takes for the, s the, gra the spike in the bugs to actually have, and then we want to keep that number really simple, no. or really, really small. So we're actually doing, so the lesson learned here is before it was like, hey, help us make Ubuntu better, please help us report bugs and stuff. Um, but now we're starting to do more of like a professional thing where we keep things building all the time. And if you commit something, even if it's not released and it breaks it, it does not ship, period. Mm -hmm. um, one of the consequences of this is uh, now the alpha image is supposed to be buildable every single day up until release. So we're getting rid of alpha releases. So instead, every day's daily build every day is, alpha. Is, is buildable and installable. And if it's not, there'll be red stuff everywhere and, and all that kind of stuff. So you might hear that we're getting rid of the alpha, and you're like, wait a minute, that makes no sense. But the It'll idea is... It'll basically be a beta, a big call for please install it, beta, what they call beta, and then right. that's it. Yeah. That's really it. So okay. Right. Oh, okay, cool. All right, now I'm done for real. No, I mean, done, done. Oh, all right. I think it's up a little bit. Okay, thank you, George. Yes, very nice. Thank you, both, both of you.